In 2021, American Counterterrorism Targeting and Resilience Institute research fellows collaborated with French data science firm StoryZ to use comprehensive social media analysis tools to uncover the true power behind the now infamous QAnon conspiracy. QAnon was launched into the public consciousness on October 28, 2017 with a single anonymous post to the 8chan forum. A community of core believers quickly coalesced around the Q posts, which they believe come from a high-ranking military professional or deep state insider. These coded messages told the world about an elite cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles who would soon be arrested and deposed by then-President Donald Trump. Because this community believes that Q drops come from an insider, posts have authority, which is important for swaying hearts and minds. Q's propaganda relies on a series of self-reinforcing, emotionally engaging narratives. They target vulnerable populations by asking open-ended questions and encouraging community engagement. But it is their reach and repetition that truly sets the Q movement apart. In order to understand the breadth and depth of Q content, ACTRI research fellows used a combination of open source intelligence techniques such as keyword analysis and algorithmic disinformation analysis. While French development company StoryZ's unique software as a service platform allows researchers to access detailed source analysis, topic analysis, chronology, country analysis, and social media analysis of disinformation sites such as blogs and articles across the internet. The StoryZ platform was critical in identifying the ecosystems and networks sharing Q disinformation narratives. By analyzing the inbound and outbound links from social media networks like Telegram, we were able to come up with a map of how QAnon distributes disinformation, which is a relatively sophisticated system. Most posts start with the Q drop, which is the original message, and it's often posted to the Q research board on Acoon. These drops are then interpreted and fed to other sites like QAG.org, QAnon.pub, and QAlerts.app. And the QAlerts.app site is particularly important because this site actually then alerts subscribers via text or email, completing this longer chain of information sharing. From there, information flows organically to the smaller, more isolated, and more polarized social networks such as Parler, Telegram, and Gab. These spaces are notoriously difficult to engage with counter-narratives because of their culture of groupthink and gatekeeping. It's only then, after the disinformation has been thoroughly discussed by the core community, that we see Q content working its way out into the more pedestrian social networks like Facebook and Twitter. If you consider the rate at which disinformation on QAnon was published, our data shows that the QAnon conspiracy theory was spreading at a steadily slow rate for most of its existence since the first Q drop in 2017. It was only in the early months of 2020 that the situation really began to evolve. And according to the StoryZ data platform, 17,152 QAnon disinformation articles were written from 2017 to November 1st of 2020. However, 8,032 of those articles were released in the eight month period leading up to November 2020. So in other words, from March to November 2020, that's 46% of all QAnon disinformation content being published, which is obviously a massive escalation that can't be overstated, especially in light of the January 6th violence in Washington, DC. As part of our research, we also polled Telegram users about their beliefs. What we found helps reinforce the spread out nature of the StoryZ social networking analysis. Q isn't one belief. Q is adaptable, taking in news and current events, and speaking directly to deep emotional fears. One common pillar is the belief that adherents are working to save the thousands of children who have been trafficked into sexual slavery. It seems like a noble goal, and the fear that our children are in danger is both relatable and manipulative. Other pillars of belief include the idea that COVID-19 is being used to control the masses, that former President Trump was being subverted by the deep state, that the elections were being stolen, and that exposure was key to building a new, utopian America. The flexible, all-encompassing nature of the QAnon conspiracy has been a huge factor in its success and has turned a forum post into this global threat. 
Our research shows that Q has evolved to include regional variations and sub-communities all over the world. We found 11 different countries that have specific QAnon channels on Telegram, including the United States, as well as Brazil, Argentina, Germany, and the United Kingdom, just to name a few. The repetition of emotionally compelling hero narratives, the perception of authority, organic communities supported by sophisticated messaging technology. It's all blended together in a perfect storm of propaganda and action. Psychological threat factors, including groupthink and polarization, simultaneously strengthen the online conspiracy theory community while eliminating adherents' ability to relate to their families, coworkers, and neighbors. When Q believers are fully radicalized and organized into action, what was once sometimes dismissed as a silly meme becomes an active threat against peace, sovereignty, and safety. In the future, more research into conspiracy theories and the best ways to subvert them needs to be funded and engaged by governments, academia, and counter-violent extremism practitioners. If we fail to recognize and respond to the very real threat of online disinformation, we run the risk of inviting events like the January 6th insurrection in Washington, D.C. to continue to occur and potentially occur in other parts of the world as well. For more information about QAnon, its core belief system, and the sources of disinformation identified by our social networking analysis, please read QAnon Conspiracy Theory, examining its evolution and mechanisms of radicalization, or visit us online at AmericanCTRI.org.